it's quite shocking that no African leaders responded to such statement, okay? And many activists, we have few activists who actually denounce this statement, the whole colonization of Africa in 2024, okay? And he even said, he was French, okay? And he even said that not only France, the Europe, they must come together and think about colonizing Africa, like they did at the time of the Berlin Conference in 18 something, I don't remember, 1885, something like that, I don't know, when they cut the African continent in different countries of the world. Okay, they put, uh, they put some, uh, f um, how do you say, borders and everything, when in fact in their own continent, in Europe, they are not real borders because if, you ha if they have European Union and they can travel from country to another one without having to ask for visa with each other, except England, okay, they, they, they cross, they go wherever they want in Europe. So this is serious, okay? So I will get you to what topic I want to talk about. It's a fact that these people are coming for us. What are we doing as Africa to counteract, to block that is obviously coming to us? The only thing that African people are talking about often now it's polygamy. They take time to talk about polygamy as if polygamy is really helping us. Polygamy, I'm sorry to offend you, but I don't see how it help. Actually, it's a financial strength for, strength for, for African families. Okay? Polygamy is even gives you headaches. I've talked to um, men who are polygamists. It's difficult, okay? And financially, it is difficult. That's something that can, that also is a problem for our society. I'm sorry. Some people say, yeah, we are polygamy. We should be proud to be that. But I'm telling you, women are not happy and children either in polygamy family. You can ask them the truth about polygamy. Do not see that it was working before in the old days, but now the world has completely changed, okay? So it led me to this discussion I want to have today. You have many activists, African activists, okay, who are upset, okay, many Africans also are of, upset when um, countries in Europe or in America, especially European, say, African people, we should not have many children, and so on and so on. And I understand that, that we are upset about it, because I was also upset because the truth is, most of the time, when they come to us and tell us how we are supposed to, because they always come to lecture African people how to live, what to do, and it can be very frustrating at some point because we know that they come with an agenda. But when we think as, as we are thinking, it's okay that we are upset and we tell them, you do not need to tell us how to, to teach or to lecture us how to live. We are free to do whatever we want in our continent. We don't control us. But the fact is they're still controlling us anyway. So anyway, I'm not going to go there. What I want to go is, the reality of having children, many children in the continent, you know, in families, African families. We have to be honest on that. Per couple, when we have many children, it is no longer possible. Because as I'm thinking about it, what we want for our children is to give them the best, is to be able to provide for them and give them the best opportunities possible. But if you have more children, understand that more children pull you, okay, pull you to precarity. Precarity. We are the same continent that complain about poverty when in fact we are 
a very rich continent. It doesn't make any sense. I understand because people will say, how can you say that you are rich and you still are poor in your continent? The truth is we have leaders, government, who do not, okay, really care about the people. I'm talking from my point of view, from experience and what I saw in the African, West Africa and Central Africa. I don't know much about the East and the South part, but I can tell you that it kind of being the same because I also read what people complain about in their countries. So we are the same who are complaining that our government is not doing much for us. And the thing is, the continent is rich, but the problem is how is these resources, this wealth is handling, is handled, is managed. I will go with the example of my own country before going to other people. We know the situation of corruption, mismanagement, uh, embezzlement, all this that we know. The people live in precarity. We know that in the 1980, 1980, 1970, 1960, people were having many children, okay? And having many children, me, myself, I come from a family of five children. Yeah, five children. And it wasn't a problem because my parents, okay, were providing. My two parents were making good money. I have to be honest on that. So I didn't live a life of lack. I didn't like. And every summer, you would be traveling, yeah, abroad. So imagine you have children traveling every summer. You have parents who are working. You have, you know, you have people working in the house. You have driver, you have a gardener, and all these have money. My parents were not member of, you know, high family like those who were in power at the time. Because, of course, when people, for example, tell you that they have high life, you have to ask yourself two questions when you talk, when you talk to Africans. Are uh, these people coming from the family who are around the presidential power? Because, or member of the government, because we know that in Africa, once someone is in the government or presidential family, they take the money from the country. In a simple word, they steal the money from the people to live their perfect life. And you have those like my parents who are working very hard for their children not to like and not to envy the other children at school. When you have children, it's a lot of money and it's a fact and there is nothing wrong to to discuss it because I understand when you have some activists who are angry about that upset about this statement but you have to be honest on that our government are not helping the people okay precarity is real the money goes to their pocket and the people are living in poverty for most of them. In 1980, 1970, 1960, it was possible. There were only people who were living difficult life, but it wasn't like today. Okay? We see that we are changing. The time, the era is changing. Now that we are going to 1980, 1990, late 1990, you start feeling now the world has been, you, you could feel the inflation. Okay, inflation in my country, for example. So people start to realize that, what? We can no longer have many children. Still, there are people who don't understand that. It is if it, they don't understand that because you cannot, you cannot change people who have uh, a vagabond life, like sleeping around and having kids everywhere. You cannot control these people. But no more couple, some of them, start to understand that many children become difficult to take care of. The first child, when you are married, the first child, you have a first child, you know, you start understanding that it's no longer about you, it's about the child. And the money that you use, that you have, you're now going to think about saving for the child. You're now thinking about changing your lifestyle. 